What's up, everybody? We are back. It is All Star Week, Draft Week. It is the first episode we are filming after Tennessee won the national championship. So we were all wrong. <laughs> we was all wrong on our prediction. Yeah, yeah. I actually, I don't know if I was wrong. Like, I think I predicted Tennessee to to be to come out of there or Texas A&M. I think we had, which is kind of crazy because they played in the national championship. So I, I think I was pretty on point with picking who would end up in the, the actual game. I think we all had A and M. Me and Trey had A and M Georgia. You had A and M Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did have Georgia for a little bit, but then you know, like. Super Regionals like, happen. NC State happens. Uh, I think NC State in the playoffs might be one of the most dangerous teams. For some odd reason, it seems like they don't lose in the playoffs so, until they get to Omaha. <laughs> but yeah. that's another problem. All right. I mean, we'll talk about that. We'll get that. We'll get into that later in this episode. But we will start with our mock draft. So what we'll mm-hmm. do is uh, we'll alternate picks. You'll start off, and we'll just go first round one through thirty. CBA is until thirty two, I guess, for the first for the first competitive yep. bounce. So we'll do yep. one through thirty two, and then we'll get into some way too early rankings for college baseball and softball. Show some softball. Yeah, love. we're trying to we're trying to switch it up. I think softball, from what I watch, from some of the girls I watch, I get to watch, and some of the teams I get to watch. College softball is fun. Like I think it's probably better than watching college baseball. Leading up to the playoffs, um, if you get to the regionals, college baseball kind of takes off. That's like the hype is ridiculous. That the atmospheres are ridiculous. Like rival games, if you get to watch, they're ridiculous. But college softball is fun to watch. Like, and, and if you look at some of these stadiums, I got the, the chance to go to Oklahoma State this past weekend and see that stadium. Do these stadiums are like they're small, but like these, you can tell these places get rowdy with how packed in there these places get. So I'm excited to, to talk college softball rankings and. And you know, give my my predictions on certain teams because I've done my research and I've, I've definitely watched it good enough to 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 give a good input. So, you know a lot more than me on that. I did some research. I got a very confident top ten. From there, I get a little shaky, but I'll count on you to help me with that. Cost softball, we might cost softball, we might have to slim down to like a top thirteen, top thirteen, twelve, because uh, it is one of those sports where like after the top twelve, you know. It could be any kind of hard, kind of hard to you know throw teams in place. College baseball is pretty easy to go one to twenty five. and Think who you think is going to be there, but college yeah. softball is different. So we probably will go to one to twelve. But my one to twelve, I think, is a very good one to twelve, and it does hold a lot of the Oklahoma World Series the ladies that were there this past year. So we'll see. We'll see. But we will start with our mock draft because the draft starts on uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. So yeah, best time of year for college baseball. Without further ado, with our number one pick, we'll put you on the clock for the Guardians. All right. So, the Guardians with the number one pick. My projection. Um, some might say it's a little different. Uh, some might agree. Uh, some might think that another man deserves it. But when you look at baseball and you understand somehow the, how the draft works in some sorts, you would understand this. So, I think they're going to go with. Jack Caglion. You either go with Jack Caglion or you go with Travis Pizzotta. Um Charlie Condon is a, the best hitter in the draft. It doesn't get better than him um, with the hit tool. But when it comes down to money and the slot value and how they might want to play it out, I do believe that the Guardians won't want to max out their slot value with pick one. Um, you know, that that's $10 million slot value that they're giving out. Like, it's hard to give a college kid ten million dollars, and I don't think that, I don't think it would give anybody ten million dollars because it's like it kind of eliminates a lot that you can do within the next picks of the draft. Because you got to realize they got a lot of other picks after that, so I think they go Jack Caglione. Predominantly, I'm gonna pick Caglione, but my other pick besides that would be Bazana. But for number one pick, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Jack Caglione heads off the board and he starts his career in Double A with the Guardians, and he takes it from there. So. That threw me off because you see, I thought you were gonna. I knew you were gonna tags, but I thought Weatherholt was gonna be here. That's who they go because that's who everyone's saying they're taking now out of nowhere. I guess right. So what I think is Weatherholt watching him this year kind of started off a little rocky after the injury, um, and then you know towards the end of the year he did what a good player does. He made the adjustments and he had a phenomenal end. 
But when you just look at this top three prospects, right? I got to pull it up. You got Bazana, Condon, and you got Kegler. It yeah. is hard to just look at Weatherholt in that group and say, mm-hmm. yeah, let's take him over Kegler. Let's take him over Bazana. Now, in case of money, would you probably take Weatherholt? Yes, because with the first pick, you're probably the better. You have the better odds of taking him under a slot by a good two mil, a good two and a half mil, which would put him at seven or nine, seven point nine. 7.8, which you have a better chance of doing that than you have a better chance of, they have a chance of getting called in casually on a Pizzotta to sign for under the slot, which I don't think, I don't think happens by a lot. I think it happens by maybe a million dollars, but that's about it. None of these guys are taking that much of a pay cut because they yeah. quite frankly, all of, all of them deserve what they're ten million. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's as good of an analysis as it gets. I'm, I'm going to take Condon for the Reds. I, I know the whole thing with the money with them, but I think if Condon gets to them, they are going to realize that, like, this is a kid that should have been taken first overall. He had one of the best seasons, and he falls into their lap at number two there. It's hard to pass up on the guy after what he's done, especially this year. And, I mean, obviously props to Bazana because he's also been elite. And that's just not this year. That's all of his years at Oregon State. And Condon had one of the best freshman seasons in all of college baseball last year, you know. I mean, we all saw what he's been doing. And I think he just becomes the clear number two choice there for the Reds. They sure up a spot and whether he wants to play third base, whether he wants to play the outfield. I mean, the Reds need it. Yeah, um, I think uh... – so this is why I said Caglione first. Um, how I see it is Caglione is a premium lefty bat um, and a premium lefty arm when he's on, right? When he's on, he's the best of the best uh, with his stuff. Um, but when he's not, you know, I've heard some people say that it's easy to see out the hand maybe, but he's, he's not a pitcher pretty, like dominantly. He's a hitter. He's going to go ahead and be 30 bombs a year, bat 300 doing it somehow, some way. So, I think the Guardians are literally salivating at the mouth at the, at the fact that they can get a lefty bat who's experienced in college, right? Has played all of college um, and he gets a chance to, you know, go in into the system. Show me, they're going to give that man a month, two months to say, hey, like go to double A. Like if you can crap on double A pitching for two months, a month and a half, we're going to get you up to the big leagues. Is yeah. That, at this time, like the, the Guardians, they've got a lot of potential and they probably want to get their guys up there as quick as they can if if need be, if if they deserve it. So I think it definitely could be a Caglio Condon situation, which is both these guys are gonna get a lot of money. Um I think neither of them really care what pick they are, probably. They probably just want to get it over it and get their professional career started. So well, for one, two, we're going to go Caglio, and then number two, we'll go Condon. And the Reds are definitely salvaging at the mouth for this man. Like, yeah. they're just like, holy crap, this is this is a pretty – it's a win-win, dude. Like, this top ten is so deep. Yeah. You can get anybody and be set. Like, we got Brandon Montgomery sitting down there. Like, we'll talk about that, too. So, I think you go Caglio and Condon, and either way, it's a win-win. Yeah. So, you got three, and then we'll take it from there. Who's the third pick? Let me, let me hear it. I'll have teams listed up next to me. I think they're Rockies. Rockies. Mm. Um, the Rockies last year, if I remember correctly, took Dolander with their first pick. Yep. Um, so they won't go the pitcher out again. Do you really see that? Uh, I hope they don't. Just, just, just for the case, that I don't want to see some of these guys pitching in Colorado. I really don't. You don't want to waste. The, you don't want to waste these guys' pride. But I think Dolander will be. Okay. Still, if, yeah. As long as he doesn't have a similar situation to his last year at Tennessee, where mm-hmm. he's leaving a lot of the ball up, he's leaving the ball up a lot. Because yeah. obviously, the major leagues playing in course, like you leave the ball up, dude, just get out of the yard. Um, my third pick, I'm going to go Travis Pizzano. Oh, with these. Uh, lefty bat, uh, a cannon of an arm. Um, the dude, the dude is, is just a dog if you watch him play, competes, they pitch in and pitch out. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to think these three, like our top three prospects are going to end up being the top three picks, which you sometimes see, sometimes you don't, but they're going to be the top three picks. And it, I think it just makes sense for the Rockies to do it. Uh, just get, get him and get a guy that can destroy the ball. It's yeah. like, he's going to, she's going to give you 25 jacks and, and do it with good speed, good movements. Like he's, he's, he's definitely for sure a third pick if he ends up falling down there. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a great pick. And then. 
Number four, the Athletics have this pick. <laughs> Look, this was Bazana's floor. I mean, if Bazana dropped here, they take him, no, ma- no doubt. But without yeah. him being here, I'm between two guys, and that being Weatherholt and Braden Montgomery. And I think I lean towards Braden Montgomery here for the A's. They have Jacob Wilson, who they just took last year, college infielder, and he's soaring through their system. But they have what they need with Max Meyer there, and they have Jacob Wilson now. I don't think they're really looking for a shortstop. That's exactly what Weatherholt is. It's a basically a, a Jacob Wilson 2.0. He has a little more power. So I think they switch it up. They go Braden Montgomery. Uh, obviously, the injury – Scares you a little bit, but he'll be good. It's, you know, it was nothing ligament wise. It was more just the bone on the ankle. He'll heal up and uh, he'll get back into that outfield and he'll get back hitting for the A's and he'll be up in two to three years. You know, I know Brandon personally. I actually texted Brandon a couple of times, um, you know, in the midst of him having the injury in, in, in Omaha. I think that kid is the definition of a hard worker or a go-getter. Um, he, you saw him, he was happy as hell to be in that dugout, uh, even after the injury. And I think that's one of the things that pop up to these teams. Like, they're like, holy crap, like, you know, this kid got hurt in the biggest time of the year, like the biggest time, you know, the game to go to Omaha. Yeah. He gets hurt. And it's, it's, it's usually hard. Like, being a young kid is hard to just sit there and want to be happy instead of just sulk and feel bad for yourself. But he did the complete opposite. You know, he's out there celebrating. So I think, Braden for sure has to be he has to be your locked in four picks. Like if you're the A's, you gotta look at this guy and say, Holy crap, like hey, we're getting the winner. Like him yeah. doing it from both sides. We've seen the arm from the outfield. It is the best arm in the draft by far. You need him in the out you need him. And I think uh he's one, also one of those guys that literally just soar through the professional system with how, you know, disciplined he is and how he knows how to go about his business. So I'm going we're going to go Caglione, Condon, Bazana, and then with fourth pick, Randall Montgomery. Yeah. So fifth pick, White Sox have it. And if Weatherholt doesn't go one, this is the lowest I see him going. I mean, a team like the White Sox, they have guys like Noah Schultz. They have pitching prospects coming up, Drew Thorpe, and they have nobody with the bats. I mean, they're. I think their highest ranked prospect with the bat is Edgar Cuero. And that says a lot. So the White Sox, I mean, they need anybody. They're a dumpster fire right now. But the guy here, the clear guy here, J.J. Weatherholt, come up. Him and Colson Montgomery can be cornerstones for that infield in the future. I think that's the number five pick. I, if he gets there, I think they take him. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to argue. You got really nothing to say about that one. All right. White Sox, they know what they need. Um, the pitching's there, obviously, like you said. Uh, having guys like Drew Thorpe and Noah Schultz being your, pro- your top pitching prospects. Uh, Noah Schultz being a little bit younger, you mm-hmm. know, but he's still soaring through the organization very well for his, uh, his age. I think you go J.J. Weatherhall, and you, you you hope that not only are you getting Weatherhall, but probably within the next two or three rounds, you're going to find another gem, right? Because this, this draft class is, is certainly deep through the first four rounds. So you're going to have a lot of guys falling through that, you know, you might not have expected to get to you, but they do. So I think, I think they go JJ Weatherholt. They they're probably very happy with their pick. Yeah, and so at pick six, you have the Royals, a team that also in the AL Central is doing pretty well. Um, I think it's hard for me to it's hard for me to pass up on what may be the closest thing we'll see. You know to. Everyone's comparing him to Paul Skeens with his strikeout stuff, the numbers, the volume. I think the Royals take Chase Burns here at six. I think you see him slide down to here. They have Blake. They took Blake Mitchell last year. They went to high school catcher, and he's doing great. So they could go another hitter and be confident in what they have with their scouting because clearly it's doing a great job there. But I think they just need another arm in their system. They don't have – Asa Lacey didn't really pan out. They have Cole Reagans, who's becoming a stud. He's an ace, and we all see it. Seth Lugo is probably the signing of the offseason for the MLB. But if you take Chase Burns here, he can have a similar rise through an organization like Paul Skeens. If he shows that he can you know, limit the home runs that he's getting touched against because he was giving up solo home runs quite a bit. Um, but other than that, people don't make that much contact off of him. And if he could keep his things in control, his pitches in control, he has great strikeout stuff, and he has – everything you want out of a pitcher he pitches with emotion he pitches with his heart on his sleeve and he throws gas and it is filthy 
Yeah, I'm going to go. Uh... Mm. I'll go birds. I'll give birds a pick. Um, Hagen Smith will probably fall. Who's next? The Cardinals, and I have them taking Which Hagen. falls perfectly to Hagen Smith. Um, you know, they're going to want a guy that, that solidified himself on the pitcher side of things, probably. Um, a guy that's done this college thing, and he's done it with the best. Uh, Hagen Smith is arguably the best pitcher in the draft uh, when it comes to stats. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe not stuff. Um, there might be some things that him being a lefty, he might need to do a little differently, right? Might need to add another pitch. He might need to, you know, change Arsenal, what he's using heavily. But I think for sure he's the, the picks of the Cardinals. And they're they're probably very happy with what they get there, for sure. Like, you're probably – if that guy falls to you, you, you can't complain. I, w- I would be too. I mean, he's been arguably the best in his arm, and he falls down to them at seven, and that's a great, that's a great place for him. Mm-hmm. I think – the only reason I don't have the Royals taking Smith is because they want a righty. They have Reagans as their ace. They want a righty lefty one too. And as much as, as you know, as much as they would like having Hagen Smith, I'm sure they're going to be just fine with Chase Burns and the Cardinals, vice versa. They'd love Hagen Smith to fall to them. Next, yeah, you're getting two of the biggest dogs in college baseball. You're not going to complain. Yeah, it's really, it's really a toss up. Put the coin, put the coin up, and whatever it lands on, you take it. Next, we have the Angels, and here, like. Here's where things start to get interesting for me because a lot of the MLB mocks have them going with one of the pitchers and they have the Royals taking someone else. And I don't think that happens. And I think the Angels might change things up here and take Seymour. Uh, uh, I think after if, – if they can – now here's the thing. He's going to play second base and, and it's the least valuable position in the infield for a scout in the draft. You don't see many second basemen go top 10. Bazana is an exception. He's elite. He's one of the best prospects we've seen hitting-wise. But I think with what he just did in the postseason, what he did all season long, he jumped his stock into that top 10. I could see him going at eight. He's a winner. He is one of the best guys on that team. He's one of the best hitters in the country <laughs> all year. He won the SEC Triple Crown. A lot of people thought he could have won SEC Player of the Year. People thought he should have been in the run for the Golden Spikes. I think he falls here to the Angels at eight, and they could get him for a little bit under slot because that's higher than what he's expected to go. And the Angels, good Lord, they need anybody. So if they can get him for under slot and get some great high school guys or guys who have fallen in the next round, they would love this pick. Yeah, my, my pick's going to be Seymour. Um, Seymour, I think he's the, the steal of the draft. Um, with what he just did, you don't get a guy playing second base who's giving you 30 pumps. Like, you don't get a guy who's doing that with ease. Like, this hit for the cycle, and it, the, the home run he hit was just a laser that got yeah. out of center field. And this was a day where they said that the wind was blowing inward. And he just took the ball and drove it straight through center field. And for who he is as a person as well, you know, you know he's going to compete. He doesn't give a damn for what it is. He's going to compete day in and day out. Uh, I've actually had the blessing of playing with him at Breakthrough Series. I mean, Hank Aaron, like, that kid is a dog. And I think he has to be your pick here for the Angels. You need somebody who's going to turn the franchise around and have people like, oh, my God, like, he got a dog. And yeah. he's exactly that because he is the Zach Neto. He can get up to the big leagues within the year if you literally just let him play, let him develop throughout the first, like, two months of the year in double A, A. And you get them up there and you let them play with your team that's not going to compete, obviously, because they're not going to compete for the next couple of years. Yeah, no. But the Angels, you know they like the fast track guys. You know they like to take some guys under slot and try and get some good high school guys or college guys that fall in the next couple rounds. And I think Simo fits the pick right there, fits the mold for the Angels. And we move on to the Pirates at number nine. They had last year's number one pick, who's an all-star in Paul Skeen's. That is ridiculous, first of all. Yeah, you're right. If you're the Pirates, you're riding a high for sure. You're you're you you're thinking you're invincible when it comes to this draft stuff. They got Teens and Teens is up. They got Jones. Jones is up there with him doing his thing. Uh, arguably Jones could have been an all-star if he really wanted to put it up there with him. Um, they have so, He's the number one prospect yeah. now. They I mean the Pirates are loaded on the arm side. Wouldn't help them to take another one. But I think Here's where you really start to see the first option of a high school hitter go. But in my mock, I have the Pirates going Vance Honeycutt. 
Um, I think what he did in the postseason propelled himself into the top 10. I think he was just just outside of it, mid to late first round before that, and then went on an absolute heater, walked off, had that walk-off home run, then first pitch home run in the next game in the regionals, and then continued his play into super regionals and just was on fire, propelled, again, one of those guys, just like Simo, that had an amazing postseason and propelled himself into the top 10. And I think his ability to stick at center field just the hitting he has, the tools he has, he could be a 2020 guy. Uh, maybe even now with this, with the way that people are stealing bases, he could be a 25, 30, 25, 40 guy because he is fast and people don't realize it. He'll play elite defense in the outfield for them. And I think that's the pick for them right there at number nine. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely think if you're them, you might, you might jump at him. Um, but. Uh, look who I've got projected here. Honestly, that's your, probably your fair shot pick right there. You, you know, you and just, you might, people might be like, "Oh my God, you guys don't have a high schooler going in the top, you know, ten right now." I don't. I do not. I don't think this is the top ten for high schoolers. I, I think this is the high school. This is the draft where we start to see the high schoolers trying to get their falling offward. Uh, we got a lot of great high school prospects in here. Don't get me wrong. These guys are really damn good. Connor Griffin, Camp Community. Like, these guys are disgusting. But um, I think these the, the college guys we're hearing, they are well-deserving, especially as to what they did this year and in the postseason that they had. Um, they're well-deserving of getting into these positions. So definitely, I agree with that Honey Cup pick. I think he's he's one another sleeper of the draft. He'd be my number two sleeper. Um, and yeah, I think you're, you'd be very happy with that pick. Yeah. And I mean, talk about high school guys. My next two picks are both high school guys. Um, I have the Nats at 10 taking Connor Griffin. Um, it was between him and Bryce Rayner here. I think they just like Griffin's athleticism just a bit more than Rayner's. Griffin can play the outfield or he can play the shortstop, maybe even the third base if they can get him there and work him there. The Nats are pretty loaded, though, in their, in their infield. And obviously, they have a pretty good farm. Obviously, James Wood, Dylan Cruz in the outfield. They have... Uh, Brady House and obviously CJ Abrams is still young. So whoever they take here is going to have great mentors coming up through their system. Mm -hmm. Don't need them right now. The Nationals, though they're looking good, they're pretty young. They're not going to compete for another two, maybe three years. And that's when, you know, these guys could be almost ready to come up and help them win at that point. And I think yeah. so you're for, you can go with your you can go with your next two picks. Your two high school picks. You can go back back with them. I'll just go after you. So, yeah, so with, with the Nats, I have them taking Griffin at 10, and then I have the Tigers taking uh, Bryce Rayner at 11. They need a shortstop. They go last year, who was probably the steal of the draft, Kevin McGonigal, and how now already is the 65th best prospect or 64th best prospect on MLB Pipeline's new top 100. He has been tearing it up. And the Tigers, obviously, with their first-round pick last year, took Max Clark, and to nobody's surprise, he's killing it in the minor leagues. So, Tigers are loading up. They're young. Their farm system's young. Jackson Job is yet to come up still. They still have some other decent pitchers, and they're looking to hopefully push things into the right direction to compete in four or five years as well. So I have those two teams taking high school guys, and then you go the Reds. Uh, is it the Red Sox? Yeah, the Red Sox are up at pick number 12. Red Sox, pick number 12. Um, you got a couple good options still on the board from the college side. I think their pick wound up being Camp Smith. Uh, he got from Florida State, who solidified himself as a dog this past two years, playing as well as he did, um, playing as well as he did in the Cape Cod and the Summer Ball. Um, I've met him, kids, a huge guy, he's a prospect. Like, he is tooled up out of his mind. Um, he is definitely somebody that the Red Sox are sitting and looking at, like, okay, if he can fall to us, we can get him. Um, but if he doesn't fall to him, I think they pivot to James Tibbs. But either way, I think you take your pick with Cam Smith if he's there and you go with the Florida you want either one of these Florida State boys. Yeah. So it's a great segue into what I have the Giants doing at 13. And I have them taking James Tibbs, the ACC player of the year this year, had an elite season, almost hit 30 jacks. I mean, that swing is made for ATT Park. He is going to go in there, do his mm -hmm. thing in the minor leagues for maybe a year. I think just from a, adjusting from ACC to the minors, it's going to take a little longer than some of the SEC guys were telling you that might be up by the end of this year. You know, SEMO might rush through the Angel system. But not to say that Cam 
going to take his time. Uh, sorry, James Tibbs is going to take his time. I think he'll be up there hitting splash homers into uh into McCovey Cove in just just a short yeah. couple of years. I mean, that's a great pick for the Giants. I think if Tibbs is gone, their pick is Cam Cam and Itty. I love the connection there. I mean, the Giants, the lefty pitcher, almost like Tim Lincecum right there. He has similar stuff to him. The slider is amazing. The fastball has a good run on it. He's going to be – I mean, if he doesn't go here, he might go in the next two picks. So, with that, the Cubs are on the clock at 14. Not going here. Yeah, the Cubs, they're sitting here. Um, got Brody Brett still there. You got uh, Tommy White sitting there. You got Ben sitting there. But I think your pick as a Cub guy, he's going to end up being a Seaver King. Uh, Seaver King, a guy that went to Wake Forest last year, and he kind of solidified himself as a guy that you needed. If you just watched him play, the tools jump off the board. And honestly, if you look at the Cubs situation, um, they're sitting in a situation where – Nico Horner hasn't played out. Um, they might trade him. They have got James Trantos uh, sitting in double-A, where they might call him up very soon. Um, so if you're looking at this situation, you're, you're sitting there, you're, if you're the Cubs, you're like, do we go for the security of getting another infielder and pray that he plays out? Or do they branch off and go Brody? I was thinking, All right, let's get a power right. arm. Let's get a power arm. Um, something to like similar that the, the Cubs that the Pirates did with Paul Skeens get a power arm. Um, he's not obviously not on Skeens level, but the stuff is there. Um, so I think you either go Seaver King or Brody Breck here. And I think the, the pick for me would be Seaver King, it would make a little more sense. Uh, but Brody Breck is definitely still in my top like three considerations for that pick for sure. Yeah, I mean, I had I had King Breck and I had a Trey Esavage. That was actually my pick there for the Cubs. I thought kind of like a Cade Horton situation, um, little less known, but also has elite stuff. Uh, was second in second in all of college baseball, uh, in ERA, right behind K- Hagen Smith. I mean, he was just elite all year. And and it's hard for me to say the Mariners take him, even though he would be the best player available at this state, but. I think the Mariners need hitting. I think they want a college guy because some of their high school guys, though they're looking great, they need to be in win now mode. They need someone to come up soon. And I think the Mariners take Carson Benj out of Oklahoma State. He's elite. He is one of the most underrated players in this draft. I think he's finally getting his recognition now. A lot of people did not know who this man was about a month and a half ago. And he is a mid first round draft pick. I think he goes at number 15 to the Seattle Mariners, him and Julio Rodriguez in the outfield for the next six, seven years after once he gets up will be must watch TV. I like that pick. I like that pick for sure. I think he's definitely the sleeper pick of the draft. Number four for me, number three, I have him listed as the number three sleeper pick. I think he's one of those guys that he gets in the system and then you just let him roll from there. Like you let him go. He's going to go. He's going to do his thing. Um, so, yeah, you put him in a situation where he'll hit or succeed. The Mariners are in a win-now situation. They want to get guys that are going to help them win in the next two or three years. Um, after, especially after going high school heavy this last year, Jeff, yeah. they want guys in college that are going to get up there and get it done quick. So, I think that, that's a very good pick for them. Who, who, what's, who's the next team? The Marlins have the next pick. Marlins have the next pick. Oh, God. The Marlins. A team that has taken shortstop after shortstop for some reason. They love the infielders. Um, they love going with the with the high school infielders, the young infielders. But this year, looking at two guys right now, it's kind of. I think Cam Smith would would have been the perfect pick for the Marlins if he fell. Obviously, keep no, him. But close. I don't see him falling. I don't, I don't see him falling. I can't see him getting to. Um, I'm gonna go. For some odd reason, they're, I'm, they're telling me that if Bryce Rayner falls. Bryce Rainer is their pick for some odd reason because they just love these shortstops. But for what they legitimately need, I'm going to go and I'm going to say you get Michael Moore or you get Tommy White. Yeah. College guys who have experienced, have a lot of experience under the belt. Um, for me, Michael Moore makes the more sense. A very good lefty hitter, um, a very good defensive catcher. Um, so I think if you're if you're trying to make a lot of sense, you can go Malcolm Moore for sure with that pick to the Marlins, and, and you let him fly through the Rangers. I think he easily could. Yeah, that's a that's a good pick there. 
I, you know, so I'm, I'm honestly, I'm going to say this here. Cause I think the Brewers at 17 jump all over Nick Kurtz. Um, oh yeah. I was my next pick there. If it wasn't uh, Malcolm Moore, it was Nick Kurtz and Tommy White. My situation with Nick Kurtz was, did it make sense for the Marlins to go after a lefty first baseman instead of a left, uh, instead of going after a premium position, like the catcher position where you could solidify somebody that can come up and, and be there for years to come. Yeah. Um, but who's next? Who's this next pick? The Brewers. And, and I think, I think they he, need, Nick Kurtz falls like perfectly into the lap of the Brewers. And him and Brock Wilkin get back together. It's going to yeah. be, it's going to be a great duo at the corner infield spots. They're both going to hit 30 bombs a year if they pan out. And, and I like that. Yep. I like the way that falls. That's going to be awesome. I mean, Nick Kurtz in Milwaukee, the slot is going to be going. So next we have at pick 18 are the Tampa Bay Rays. This is where I'm mean, interested. I can, I can tell you personally that the Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay Rays are just uh, pitcher lovers. So you would almost guarantee them taking an arm here. And with that pick, I am going to give Trey Savage's pick. Um, I have him going to the race and taking all that great stuff he's got. They're obviously the second in ERA. He goes to the race. That guy's going to turn into an absolute madman and just yeah. be a dog. So I think that's a good pick for them. I think if he falls, you go after him. Yeah, I think that's amazing. I mean, he's going to pan out to be an all-star if he gets into the right hands and the Rays mm-hmm. are perfect hands for any pitcher. I mean, you're a pitcher. You want you have a short list of teams you want to go to in the Rays. I was a pitcher. If I was in this draft this year, next year, my team that I aim to go to is the Rays, right? What they do with their pitchers and what they do with their guys, it's it's unreal at this point. And you, you want to be a part of that. You want to develop in that manner. So, Trey yeah. Savage, I'm, I'm giving him. I'm going – He's going to the Rays for sure, which sucks for my Yankees because that man is going to be a dog for the next few years to come, especially because he's older. So it might take him a little less time to get up there. So, but I, I definitely got him added to my uh to Tampa Bay. Yeah, and then at nineteen we have the New York Mets. So rumors are they like college hitters, but the Mets the Mets like to take high school guys a lot, and they took they took Kevin Parada two years ago, took Jet Williams as well in that draft two years ago, like. They, they've been all over the place, and so I'm between one high school guy and one college guy. I think for the high school guys, I think they take the infielder, Theo Gillen. But I, I, I think they go college hitter here, and they take an outfielder in Dakota Jordan out of Mississippi State, who had himself one of the most untalked about years in the SEC. I mean, what he did was just flat-out stupid, and – because of how good the SEC is and how good the players there are, he was only a second team all, all American and second team all SEC. And that is ridiculous. 336, 336 for 30 jacks. It just doesn't it doesn't get doesn't that get shouldn't be a second out. team guy. That should be a first team guy. And I think, like you said, the Mets, he's a he's a prospect. Like he's tooled up out of the mind. Um I think Dakota being who he is as a person as well helps him like yeah, I think that's your guy to go to if you're the Mets. Yeah. If you're the Mets, you go him, or you would head towards Ryan Walshman. Ryan Walshman, I... Bill Lavallo, you go the they're going the outfield route. I know they're going to go the out. I think they're going to go the outfield route. You either just go Walshman or you go Dakota Jordan. It's a win win. Like you're going to get a damn good guy no matter what. And their outfield is going to be loaded in a couple of years with Drew Gilbert going through the system. They have whoever is going to stay there. If Brandon Nimmo's still there, I mean, in three years, he'll still be pretty decent. You get Dakota Jordan or Ryan Walshman, if that's who their pick is. I love it for them. Blue Jays are going next to 20. I mean, the Blue Jays are having a dump of a year, and they might trade off Bo Bichette, and they might – it depends on what they do. And if they get a deal done before the draft and they do know that they're going to trade Bo Bichette, I think the pick might be Kalen Culpepper. To get a shortstop of the future come up, it's going to come up quicker than Arjun Namala. Arjun Namala can end up moving a second, moving a third if they want to develop that. And and I think if they know that they're going to trade Bobochet because it's seeming very likely that they might try and find a replacement. And Kalen Culpepper had one of the 
best years in the Big 12. He's shooting up draft uh, draft boards, had a great combine for himself, performed well at workouts. And, I mean, the Blue Jays need a guy that can come in and be a spark plug for them, turn things around, because on paper, they're still a good team. They're just in a tough division, and their players just aren't playing great this year. Yeah, I don't – so that's kind of a weird pick for me. Um, you know, the shortstop situation, it's hard to nail a premium shortstop, especially at this point in the draft. You're usually going to get, you know, 20 pick in the first round. It's a lot of options. There are a lot of good options left. It's just a matter of how many great, like how many options you really think can go and be that table setter, that that guy that turns your your, your team around. Um, we still got one guy on the board from the top 10 prospects, Bryce Rayner. We did not put him on a no, pick I took yet. him. I took him. Did you take him? The tight. I have the na- the national. Okay, yeah, you did. You did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bryce Rayner's gone. So yeah, if that's the case, you definitely go Caleb Cooper for sure. You take him and you go. This guy's gonna turn this around. Like he's he's you either you either strongly believe that or you strongly prey on the fact that he is the guy that turns you around. Because you got to think Kevin Biggio didn't turn around. Yeah. Oh shit! Trying to get him out of there for some prospects probably. What's your, what's your, what I think they'll do? They probably trade for some prospects. So I think. Cole Pepper is your pick here. If you have the Blue Jays, you don't need arms. You don't need it. You need to go after what you're, you're giving up, and what you're giving up is the premium shortstop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think I think another pick that sleeper pick for the Blue Jays could be Tommy White, a third baseman that'll come in and absolutely mash. But you know, I don't think they want to wait that much on Arjun Amala. They have decent pieces around what they have. If they can get Ooh. Caleb Pepper there, yeah. Who's that next pick? The Twins have the next pick. Twenty one. Yeah, the Twins are oh, have... twenty-two. The Yankees are twenty-six. Twenty-six. Okay. Oh, baby. Um. Twins um. Are... Tommy White is heading to is heading on this pick. Yeah. This is pick right here. He. This is the ceiling of where he'll fall. Um. I don't think he can fall any further than this. Um. He's a premium bat. You may not. He may not pop the eye like a lot of these other guys do, but premium bat. You got to take Tommy White. Simple as that. Winner, national championship winner, played with guys like Dylan Cruz, Paul Skeens. He knows what it's about. He knows what he needs to do. You take Tommy White and you roll with it. Yeah. And at tw- so that's 21, 22. We have the Orioles. I have them taking Lou. I think <laughs> I know, I know it should be Lou to the Yankees. I know. I think I'll be heartbroken if that kid doesn't end up a Yankee. Yeah. I, I put all my money, I put all my banking odds, odds on Lou to the Yankees. And you probably know more gonna, than I do. So, so I'm gonna I'm hold gonna, off. I'm gonna hold off on that on that pick. I'm gonna okay. say, yeah, you can take them to the Orioles. You I, can take I, the Orioles because knowing the Orioles, they see a guy that they know the Yankees will love, and they he fits the profile of a guys they would want. The smart thing would be to take Lou, right? Lou is a ridiculous right arm, right handed arm. Like if you look at his right handed set, like his arms from the right side, ridiculous. Up to ninety eight, um, fouls his own. Overpowers a lot of guys. Left side does the same, just a little more, just uh, like a little more playing around, not really pounding, but he's trying to dice and dice. Um, so I think, God, I don't want him to get taken right there. I just really I don't, don't either. Want him to I don't either. It's between him and Brody Brecht. I think they're taking an arm. And they're not taking a high school arm. I it's it's hard for me. It's hard for me they to. Got, they got to go with an arm, and at this point, all of our arms are flying off the board. College arms are flying off the board. Um. Yeah, yeah. Sadly, it is looking like Lou slides out of there to the Orioles. Unfortunately, but golly, I, if he becomes a Yankee, I just know he will be. You don't really see the Yankees fly guys up to their system, but God, you can't deny how good that kid is going to be. He's going to fly, but at the same time, if he goes to the Orioles, I also believe that he will fly through that system because. Grace Rodriguez, like if we look at the arms that have flown through the, the, the season, the this the rankings for the Orioles, these guys did it in fashions of two years, a year and a half. Drangle is sitting in a situation where if he goes to the Orioles, or if he get, like if the Rays take him, let's also put that into perspective. If the Rays see this guy and say we want him. God, this is hurting me to say so many ALS teams, the East teams, but I wish the Yankees had an earlier pick because they would be this they would be easily jumping on him. They, but if you're one of these teams and you're looking at them, you need them. Like, you need them. And he screwed up with their whatever the, their money consideration because we should be at pick 16. Drop 10 slots because of luxury tax and all that. 
Next, 23, the Dodgers. This is where this is where it gets tricky for me because they're gonna go high school and I think they're gonna go arm. And the clear guy is William Schmidt. Yeah. If if you're if you're looking at high school arms, William Schmidt is the guy. Right? But I just also, don't Yeah. Also. I have apparently people are talking about, about this kid possibly getting to LSU. DJ Morlando. Um, no, that they're, they're oh, speaking oh, about Smith, this kid. Smith, Smith, they're yeah. speaking about Smith, Smith getting to school. Good God, if he gets to the LSU, he might win freshman of the year. Yeah, his stuff. I can see it. His stuff and the amount of freshmen that are gonna end up signing, he will fly up. But at the same time, I feel like if they do pick him here, he, goes. he takes his money and he goes. Right? Usually, they don't. High schoolers don't usually say no to this money in the first round. This isn't even a comp pick. This is a first round pick. So the money is there. The opportunity is there. Yeah. You gotta take it again. I think he goes and I think they got it. He got it. He's gotta take it. Unfortunately, I, I agree. And then the Braves at 24. Last year they took Waldrop. You know who I'm actually I'm gonna I'm gonna move away from the mold of of arm for the Braves. Though I think it's likely that they take Brody Brett <laughs> if he's still available here. I'm going to go Caleb Lomavita. The catcher mashes. And the Braves at catcher, though they have Sean Murphy, by the time Lomavita gets up in a couple of years, they, he might be a little old. They might want to move on. He's not playing the best. I mean, Lomavita might slot into that lineup, make them younger, make them. Uh, we got to realize Sean Murphy is a young guy. He's 25, 26, 26, 27. If I'm correct, I'm, I'm very sure I'm correct. Let me, let me look this up for sure. He could, be, he could be. I might be thinking he's 29 for whatever reason. No, I, I think he's, in, he's a young. Oh, he, mm, he is 29. But, but, it's based how I see this. Caleb gets called up. Sean Murphy doesn't necessarily have to be the catching guy at that point, right? They don't have a Freddie yeah. Freeman. They have a Matt Olson where they could slide him to a DH, um, preserve his legs even. So he could go either or. I think, yeah, I think he could go. Okay, I think he could go on the here and, and still be happy with your pick. Um, uh, now who's up next in this pick? So next is the Phillies. I've got the Phillies going Johnny Santucci. That's that's a great pick. Premium really? lefty arm, um, great stuff. Uh, Northeast kid, he's 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 just one of those guys you got to get him. Yeah, just don't let him fall through any further. Just go get him now. Um, looking at the guys in front of him that are still available, nothing crazy, right? Nothing to where you're like, oh my god, I need him. But I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna change your pick from this last pick that you just gave me. Okay, I'm gonna go Jacob Kozart. When we talk catchers, I'm gonna go. Uh, no, I'm gonna Off go the Braves. Braves. Jacob Kozart. He fits the mold. He fits the mold. A guy that. If you watch him catch, it is yeah. like it is beautiful defensive mastermind. One of the best framers hitting can hit the ball with the best of them. I think you got to take Kozar instead of Lamavita, and you and you you know Lamavita fall to somebody else because Kozar is the catcher of the draft. He's the number one catcher in this draft, without a doubt. To me, I can see that. And so, not oh, uh, Padres at twenty five, not Phillies. Phillies are twenty seven. That's on me. So Padres, okay, 20- it's the Padres. And that's a high school. Um, that's different than the Phillies. That's a high school guy right there. Padres is 20. They're not. Mm-hmm. The Padres, I think, they go Luke Holman. Who do you think they go? I think they go Luke Holman. Luke Holman. Another that's good arm. Yeah. Another, another good, good arm. Guy. Still available. Um, guy that, you know, at LSU was that guy. Him and Gage jump side by side. I, mean, I think you got to go Luke Holman and you, you take an LSU dude because you know these LSU dudes that they get. Just look at who LSU is getting in this draft. LSU guys are performing. Like you need, if you're, if you're a pro scout, if you're a pro team, you want an LSU dude on your roster. So I think you go Luke Holman and you're very happy with that pick. It's a great yeah. arm. So next 26, we have our Yankees. This, is, this pains me because without Lou, without Brody Breck, it's. An, it's, it's not, kind of a where the hell do we go situation. It's so, and here's where I turn to third baseman out of Tennessee, Billy Amick. I love. I, I, 
that makes me happy. That makes me happy that one of my friends are gonna get picked to you know to my Yankees. But uh, I do love that pick. I do love I, that pick. I, think I like Billy that pick a lot right now. Dude. I like I that pick Bill, a lot Bill's right a great now. Dude. With the way with the way the corner infield is shaping out for the Yankees, Rizzo can't hit anymore. Lemayhu can't hit anymore. Yep. And right, it falls perfectly to the situation of if Durango is not there, we don't go for the premium arm. We go for the premium bat and Billy Amick. The I, guy who might have a little bit of a strikeout issue. Might. But you can get that fixed up in pro ball. You just got to let him go through the pro ball system, figure it out. But I don't think it'll take him long at all. I, 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 I do think if you're the Yankees, if you're the Yankees and he is available, you cannot look past him and say, oh, like, let's pivot to somebody else. Yeah, I, I, I like them. I like Lombard. I like the pick from last year, but it's going to take a couple years. So if you want to speed up this process, you have one of the best rotations. The pitching is there. We've seen it all year. The offense can't hit. So if you want to get a guy that can hit, get Billy Amick. He'll once he fixes his strikeout issues, he will get there and be a great corner infielder for the Yankees for the next however many years he's there. Next mm-hmm. at twenty seven, we have the Phillies. The Phillies have taken high schoolers four years in a row now. I'm sticking with my pick of Santucci. Santucci to the Phillies. I, I like I think he'll 100% be available at that time. I don't think a lot of people are jumping at him because there's a lot of good options on the board. But I think Santucci is the, the clearer pick for the Phillies here because just look at the Phillies. Phillies are a team where they – right now you're not looking at the team like, oh, you need to fix this, you need to fix that. They're a pretty good team. They're well-rounded. They win. Um, They're sitting at the top of the MLB in a lot of statistics. Like, they don't – they're probably looking to add pitching before anything. They got Trey Turner locked under for a while. They got Bryce Harper locked under for a while. Bryson Stock. You got Alec Bohm. Like, they got a young core. Brandon Marsh. Like, you got a young guy, a group of guys that can stay around for a little bit. Bryce Harper obviously isn't that young. And this is why I was kind of, you know, I was going to say they go Santucci here, and then if Blake Burke is available on their next pick, yeah. you know Blake Burke. Absolutely. He's a he's similar to a Schwarber. He won't strike out as much as Schwarber. He's going to hit the ball harder than hell, yeah. and he's going to get on. So I think you go Santucci here, and the Phillies are probably in the biggest win-win spot because they're not in a situation where they're like, we need to win now, right? They're not like, yeah, no. we need a great prospect now. They have so many. They have Andy Painter still. And Andy Painter has not touched the pros, and he's probably the best pitching prospect that people are starting to forget about because of the injury. But, yeah. Lord, he's- when he gets back full going, he's – the best pitcher in, in I mean, look in at the, the, look the guys in the Philly system that they traded last year. You got Ben Brown in the pros already for the Cubs doing things, and Logan Ohapi is probably the Angels' best player right now. So yeah, I, I, I think if you're the Phillies, you take Santucci, and then if Blake Burke is available, you snag his ass too. Yeah, and then next you have the Astros. I don't think they're going to college guy. I mean, they're going to start a rebuild soon. It's hard to say that when they have. Guy, these guys on paper, but the Astros just are falling apart. I love to say that as a as a Yankees fan. Um, Sing time the Astros. I am too. So I think this is a perfect spot for a prep guy. And Jay Morlando is my pick here. Yeah, I I love that pick. Another lefty guy that fits in with the likes of Kyle Tucker, Jordan Alvarez can hit for elite power. And he is literally, they, out, right? if they can if they can mold him the way they want him to for the four years that he'll be in the minor league system, he will be Kyle Tucker for, of the future for them. So why not get him? I think they get PJ Moreno here and they sign him for probably exactly the slot value, if not a little under. Yeah, and they go with him. I love that pick. I love that pick, and I think they can even. I think he can even transition full time first baseman and and yeah, because his arm is the greatest, right? But his yeah. defense it. His quickness, his quick twitch, he, he could stick at first. I think so, too. Next, <sighs> we have the Diamondbacks at pick 29, and they have two picks here. But with – so so for me, it's weird to say don't go best player available. And I'm going to go back to someone who I took for the Braves. He felt he's fallen now. The Diamondbacks need a catcher, just uh, – need a hitter. Gabriel Moreno is um, good, but he's not – I mean, he's falling off a little bit defensively and if he can go and transition to be a dh or a first baseman or whatever that may be then put him there and take caleb lomavita here that was a pick yep you gotta go with him at that point you gotta go with him he's still available you don't pivot any further you go get him yeah and you have a pick and two more picks so see what happens here next at 20 at oh, 30 the 30, rate this is the last pick we got here or we're going 32 
We'll do yeah, we could do thirty two. Those are the first two uh, rookie of the year picks that they give them for the. Let's award. go thirty two. Let's go thirty two, oh. and then we head to the college softball rankings, and we finish it with the big time college baseball. So <sighs> at thirty, the Rangers have another catcher, Walker Janik. Went under the radar this year at Sam Houston State. I mean, not many people hear about that, but boy, can this kid hit! Like, that's a good pick. It's a I, it's a subtle pick that not a people a lot of people are thinking about. Um, and I, I try to like it. I try. I do like it for him. Yeah, I mean, it's it's mocked there. Also, uh, I have I have it mocked. I think MLB mocked it in their latest mock draft. And when I saw that, I liked the pick a lot. Uh, I think, you know, the Rangers can use. Bats right now, they're coming off of a little bit of a work hangover, but they're right in the mix. They can make it back to the playoffs, and obviously from there you have Corey Seager, you have Adolis Garcia, yeah. Simeon can turn it up, and uh, Wyatt Langford's on a hot streak right now. So there's obviously yeah. that. Good pick for sure. That's a good pick for sure. Who's uh, next? Like, right we here? go back to the Diamondbacks at 31. Perfect. Go back to the Diamondbacks here at 31, and uh, if you're looking at the Diamondbacks, if you are the Diamondbacks, you're looking around and you're saying, well, you've got center field covered for the future with Corbin Carroll. Yeah. Possibly a right field covered in the future with Drew Jones coming up. Drew's starting to play really well. Yeah. Starting to be the Drew Jones that we figured he would be. Yeah. And you're kind of looking at left field and you're like, who's available? Who do we have? And this is where I say you pivot and you go Mike Sorota. You snag Mike Sirota late early late in the first round and you drop his slot value a good million. You save money on the pick, but you still get a dang good athlete. You get a dang good outfielder and a guy who is tooled up out of the mind. You give him a year to you give him some years in, in the minor league system and he flies up. So I think Diamondbacks pivot to Mike Sirota here and they, they take him in with confidence. With confidence for sure. Yeah. I I think that is a really under the radar pick. I didn't think of him, but it's yeah, very under the radar to go there. I mean, he was top 10 projected pick at the start of this year. Yeah, got to realize he's top 10 projected. And the only thing that probably hurt him is the conference, right? Like, <laughs> seeing how a lot of these guys before and played in their conferences, because we – think about it, we only called out four high school guys. Everybody else, college guys, who solidified themselves. And they're all – they all play for a regional team. All of them play for a regional team. That is ridiculous to think about. And Mike Sorota played for a team that was in a conference that was below par, I mean – that's what's hurting him. That's the only thing hurting him. Mike Sorota was an SEC guy. Holy crap, he'd be a top 30 prospect with ease, but he's 50th right now, and it's only because of where he was at and the coverage he was getting. But I think he slides off to the to the Diamondbacks here, and the Diamondbacks are very happy with him because he fits the tool of – he fits the, the agenda of what they usually go with Yeah, in an outfitter. Speed, and he also adds a little bit of the power part. I agree. And then – so at 32, he has a lot – to do and it's the Orioles. I took I have them taking Lou, um, unfortunately. So I don't think they're gonna go arm again. And I, I, I don't see a college guy that you know the Orioles are gonna jump on because they are blocked pretty much everywhere right now. So with that being said, I think the Orioles take um Slade Caldwell. I think that's a that's the pick for them. Dude, that's a good pick. That's a good pick. Good I, pick. I think if he falls there, which he may not. He may not fall that far. But if Slade Caldwell falls at 32, you pay him a little over slot, and I think that, that keeps him away from school. And uh, he goes at 32 for the Orioles, and he'll be able to develop in that system where they create some of the best hitters as prospects that you see. I mean, they have Kobe Mayo. They have Heston Kirsad. Obviously, they have Jackson Holiday. Look at what mm-hmm. Joe Asperger is doing. Look at what Colton Kowser has been doing. And the talent is limitless there. So if he gets into the right hands, he's going to be a major, major guy to watch in two, three years. So with that being said, those are our one through 32 picks in the mock draft. And we will move into the college softball rankings. Way too early 2025 rankings. You know more about this than me. So I'll let you lead for softball. And uh, do you want to start at softball? To start that. You want to start from the higher numbers. We're gonna, I'm gonna start from ten. I'm gonna start from ten, and I'm gonna work my way up. Right. So I looked at, um, looked at coaches' polls. I looked at final rankings from the year before. I looked at Omaha, not Omaha in their in their situation, Oklahoma City performance, uh, meaning the World Series for them. 
Mm-hmm. And I kind of just went from there, right? Um, yeah. At the number 10 spot, I'm going to give Georgia the number 10 spot. Um, a good softball team that, quite frankly, I know personally I've seen uh, my boys' girlfriend plays for that team. I've seen them play personally. A very good team. Um, didn't have the year they wanted to. Lost to a good Liberty team. And they were in a, no, almost lost to a good Liberty team in the regional. Ended up going to UCLA and losing, losing to UCLA. Was also on my top five. But I think they – on the cusp of on the cusp of getting to that oh, that World Series appearance that they so desperately want, um, so they got to be ten, and it's kind of a prove it year for them. Like they got to just do what they can to get to get to Oklahoma and win. Uh, not even win it, just get there and make a run. Yeah. Um. So that's my number ten. My ten was Florida, but I have a Georgia up there in the top ten as well. So I, I like that. And uh, you go you go with your nine. My number nine, right after Georgia, um, I'm gonna pivot over. To Duke, uh, a Duke team that kind of surprised a lot. Uh, didn't really, I don't know if a lot of people watch college softball, it didn't really surprise me. Um, but uh, they made it to Oklahoma City, they played decently well the whole year. Um, a very good team, I think they sit in the nine spot for me, um, way too early, and I think they probably end up sitting at the nine spot at the end of the year, quite frankly. I think that's one of my good picks, one of these two of my very good picks right here. Um, so I'm gonna uh, Georgia, Duke. And then at the eight slot, this so one gets a little tough, right? Because if you really watch college softball, yeah, you you know a lot of these teams are very good, but sometimes it just doesn't pan out, and you sometimes yeah. just lose. And with the number eight pick for my too early, I'm gonna go with LSU. LSU. Oh. So I have them in my top sure. fifteen, but I, I have them I have them up there in fifteen. So I went with. At nine, I went Arizona. I, I just okay. that was my seven. That was your seven. Okay, so I didn't know where you sat on them because obviously destroyed Pac twelve. So now they're going to go to the Big Twelve and see what happens. That's, that's why I put them in the Big Twelve uh, seven because how does the Big Twelve? Um, another one of my favorites. My favorite to win the World Series to be in the top two, the final teams is Oklahoma State. Yeah, um, might be a little biased because I think Talon Edge, Talon Edge was just the best junior upcoming hitter in the country. Um, that girl is disgusting, but I think when you head into the Big 12 conference as a, as a new team, the target on your back is going to be huge. Teams yeah. are going to play better because they want to beat you and they want to kind of prove their point. Uh, they're like, Hey, like this is our conference, like you're not going to come in to beat us. Oklahoma's leaving that conference, put that into factor. Who do we have left? Texas is Oklahoma leaving it too. Oklahoma State is the top dog in this conference. Arizona yeah. to be seventh, you better be happy with this spot because at that point yeah. you're getting you're in a situation where now you just got to run through Oklahoma State, which I don't think is going to happen. No, um, I've watched some of their games. I watched a lot of their games, the way they play. I've watched a lot of games when they're at home. I don't think anybody could just run in there and beat them. So I'm going to go Arizona at seven. Yeah, I mean we have the same teams up. We have the same teams up here so far. So at seven for me, instead of Arizona, I had uh, FSU. FSU was six. So, yeah, I mean, they had a great season. They – so, obviously, it's tough because the ACC is a little weaker in terms of softball than you would think for compared to its other sports. But Florida State is the clear top dog in that conference. Yeah, for uh, sure. Um, it's not even a question at this point. Yeah. You know what they're bringing to the ACC every single time. And I think if you're – a softball player and you're in Florida in general, because think about Miami doesn't have a softball team. We don't have one. Yeah. Um, Florida's team is okay. Not a bad team at all. Pretty good. But you, you'd you right aim to go to Florida State because Florida State is just. That's the best. That's the best in it, Florida. I give them Florida. I give Florida the edge, honestly. But also I'd probably give Florida State the edge because the ACC, you probably have a better chance of succeeding in the ACC than you do in the SEC. So I, I, I thought I think if you want to win, you want to play a lot, you would, as a softball player, you would go to Florida State. So yeah. I'm going to go Florida State six. So at six, yeah. Yeah. At six at five, five, Oklahoma State. But... Then at the five, then at the five, I go Florida, right? Where they go back to back with each other. Um, another really good team, uh, another Oklahoma team. Um, so I think neck and neck is where they belong. Um, I think uh, that's a, that's a team that made it to the World Series. I keep it's so weird to say not say Omaha team, like you say an Oklahoma yeah. team. It's so weird to not say Omaha, but give respect to these ladies. They they go on a different path than us, and it's pretty cool to watch them. So I think go Florida State, Florida, and then after that, that's what that leads us to the that go. We had the top five. We had the top five. 
So top five, five. I have Tennessee. A lot of people are going to hate you, my friend. But I would agree with you slightly. My number five. UCLA. Okay, I have UCLA at four. I was going UCLA and then Tennessee. Okay. Just the so- SEC bias with how good. Actually, flip that. Let's go out Tennessee, then out UCLA. Perfectly, because Tennessee has a, a chance to finish in top five. is very slim now with Oklahoma and Texas heading to your conference. And now LSU's in there. Florida's in there. Like, you got to play really well to be a top five team. Really? Georgia's in there. We have six, seven, six teams in the top ten that are in the yeah, SEC. Out of SEC. If you oh, got to play big. at the top of the top level to be there. So, yeah, let's go for – let's go uh, Tennessee, then UCLA. UCLA, and then with the third pick – Stanford. Stanford is my third. Nah, no. Oh, God. I'm going to go 3A and 3B. Okay. Out of a tie. Um, 3A and 3B. I'm going to go Stanford and Texas. Okay. I I get it. Stanford and Texas. Because Texas is my two. Stanford's my three. And they're just separated like this. Texas, SEC now. I mean... (laughs) Just depends on how they do in, in against Oklahoma. It also depends on where those games are this year. Also remember, also remember, Stanford is now an ACC team. They, yeah, they are in the ACC. They're gonna play Florida State. Might be a little harder to to win out of that conference. And this is why it leads to my pick here. My number two pick is Oklahoma. Meaning, my number one pick is Oklahoma State. You might say, "Whoa, Oklahoma is the top dog in softball." Listen to me. Oklahoma is heading into the SEC and have to play, like we just said, five of the top ten teams in the country. Oklahoma State is playing in the damn Big 12 where they're about to steamroll this conference like no other, and no one's going to stop them until they get to the World Series. And at that point, our rankings will be solidified. Like, I think they get to Oklahoma in the World Series as a number one team, number two team. And and then Oklahoma beats them in the World Series. Oh, don't put no hate on my girls, but because no, uh, no, no. it's not they it's not. beat Oklahoma State in that series. Crazy, Oklahoma State beat Oklahoma in the series. That's another thing. Like they have beaten these teams that I put behind them. They, they beat, have. They beat Texas. They, they beat Oklahoma. They, they beat a lot of good teams. Like this team is very good. So I'm they are my number one. My number one is Oklahoma State. And okay. they're the top dogs right now that everybody's looking at because of where they're at, not because necessarily they're the best team. No, they are the one of the best teams, but they're also in the absolute best position to win. Yeah. They're in the they're in the worst power four conference now for softball. The absolute worst. Like it's the it's the craziest one because it's like we have a lot of teams in here, but how many of those teams are quality teams? Like, you know what I mean? Like these aren't like teams that everybody's like. Oh, like these teams, no, these are teams that everybody like, dude, they're about to roll through y'all. Like, dude, yeah, they think about it. they play, they went against, went against Oklahoma, Texas, they went against the big dogs already. They've been to the World Series two years in a row now. Yeah, this has got to be a clear shot. I'm gonna pick, and we'll, we'll really, we'll post the graphic up on Instagram, um, yeah. with these rankings for both because we want to get, we want to get, you know, I want to get softball players' opinions, I want to get what they think, and I want to get what college baseball's thinking when we come out with their rankings next. So, I'm gonna go. Oklahoma State, the number one pick. I definitely will stir up some controversy. Yeah. And, yeah, we'll, we'll see from there. So, those are college softball top 10. Now we have our top 25 for college baseball. And Did we, we write that it? down, actually? Did we write that down? I have, I have it in notes, but also I have okay. the recording. So. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I run through it. We have the top we get that, we get that graphic up. college baseball rankings. This is where it gets good. And starting this is what off, everybody comes for. This is what everybody everybody wants to stir the pot with the college baseball rankings. And and so let's get into it. Starting at twenty five, I got the U. That's a that's a good pick. I mean, um, if you if you watch, if you've seen the portal, you see what we're doing in the transfer portal. If you see the freshman class we've got coming in, we're gonna compete. Like it's simple as that. It ain't gonna be a situation where last year, you know, wasn't the best year for them, obviously. Dealt with some injuries, dealt with some other factors, but those happens. You also can't ignore the fact that we were a team. We're we're a school where 44 years in a row we were in the playoffs, um, in the regional, in the, in the big time situations. You can't ignore the fact that two years two years in a row we lost the regional by one run games. Um, so 
and we hosted one, like, dude, we're a team that's coming back. We're gonna come back. We're we're gonna be hungry. Um, I know the guys that are headed on to the team now are, are extremely ready to be there and get it going. So, I love that twenty five pick for sure. Um, my twenty four after the year they just had. Um, I'm gonna give it to I'm gonna give it to Duke. Uh, my to my twenty four will be Duke. Uh, they might be a little low for a lot of people, right? Might be a little low. But um, I also think it's just reasonably so. They're losing Santucci. It's definitely a little bit of a more. They got to prove it a little bit. Um, I think they got a lot, a lot of good transfers coming in. Um, yeah. But I think they they are my twenty four. Uh, but they reasonably so. Like if you really wanted to argue with me, dude, I'd give. I'd say that they could be a name top fifteen team if you really. Yeah, I, I have them just outside the top fifteen. Honestly, at a sleeper team at twenty four, uh, UCF. I've seen they've been doing a lot of work in the portal. They've been doing some good things, and and again, they're in a Big Twelve, which really isn't extremely strong. So, uh, I I think UCF could sneak in there, but I I definitely you know Duke is a little low there, but I I can see it at twenty three. I have DBU. They find their way into rankings every year I, for the last couple of years. Though they lose, they are losing their their best guy to the draft. They're losing uh Johnson, their, mm-hmm. their guy, and they lost some guys in the portal. They somehow find guys that they reload up on where you have no idea where they come from. And yep. they're a sneaky team every year. Obviously, the fact that they don't play in a great conference helps them with that. But um, it's just it's just something that you can't really ignore that team. They're gonna they're gonna have a really good record. They're yeah. gonna be dangerous. And they're gonna finish in the top twenty five, right around where they are right now. And I have them at twenty three. Can't really argue with that one. I think it's a good pick. Um, my twenty-two. I'm gonna give Kansas State their respectful yeah. ranking. Um, it's a very good team. Have a- had a very good year. Um, they got to be up in your top twenty-five. If they're not in the top twenty-five for you, you're kind of just hating. You're right. you're really not watching baseball. Like this is a team that went into Arkansas and they handled business. Um, yeah. in a situation where they faced the best pitcher in college baseball at the time. Um, so they got to be they got to be your pick here for twenty-two. So I'm gonna rock with them. Who's yeah. your twenty-one? UC Santa Barbara, they did not lose a game at home until the regionals. Um, yep. And I think playing in a mount, like, you know, playing in these week conferences really helps you, especially when yep. somehow you guys could get magic at home and they didn't lose that many guys. Um, I think they run it back. They don't host a regional this year just because of how strong these power four conferences are. Oh, um, yeah. It, 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 it's it's going to – let's, let's... People let's, are going to realize the rankings are going to be a little different this year. Strike is going to matter. All of that is going to be. Also, let's be look at what Stanford was able to do in the big, like in, in their Pac-12 situation. They didn't, they weren't the best, right? And now they come into the ACC where ACC's loaded. Um, you see it, Wake Forest, NC State, the top guys do Florida State. Like it goes on and on. And this is with us, Miami, having an off year this past year. So. <laughs> The hosting situations for a lot of these teams might for a lot of these teams might be crazy. So for me, I think this might be one of the best years of college baseball we've seen in a while when it comes to how different it is because of all this stuff, like all this moving around with teams and all this different schedule. Yeah. Like just imagine, just imagine Oklahoma going to the SEC and they just whack them. Like that would be the biggest shocker at everybody because nobody's expecting them to go in there and perform. They're like, all right, I've heard people say Oklahoma's gonna go in there and be a bottom part team. I don't believe that thing will happen at all. I think they will be in there a top six, top five team in the, in the conference. I think Texas will be a top six, top five team in the conference. So I'm excited to watch all of these conferences. And that, and that, that I think a lot, I hope a lot of people are feeling the same way as yeah. because college baseball is heading in the right direction for sure. I agree. So that's where I have UC Santa Barbara slotting in at 21. Who do you have at 20? My 20 pick. Uh, let me get it pulled up. Uh, I had it with Mississippi State here at 20. Okay. Um, didn't finish out the year like they, they wanted to. Uh, ended up losing in the Charlottesville Regional. But a very good team, nonetheless. A very good team that's got a lot of good transfers coming in. So this top 20 pick for them is not bad at all. It's not even, it's not a piss to Mississippi State. It's just the perfect place for them to be before the season starts. It's way too early at the end of the day. This is before the portal closes. When the portal closes, we'll have a full episode with all the guys and the impact transfers that I have. Because right now I think Mississippi State is a top 10 transfer portal team. I think they have pulled together the top ten class. Uh, they might be like eight or nine, so they definitely working. And I, I think twenty is the perfect place for place for them. So who's your nineteen? And nineteen, I have Oklahoma State. Um, they're a really good team. 
but they just they, they haven't seemed to break over the hump yet. Maybe this year now, like I said, being in the Big 12 might help them. They might boost their ranking up a little bit because they are one of the best teams in that conference. It's them in Arizona now. Um, like, you know, same situation as it is in softball. I just think I think Arizona's a little better than them. So I have Oklahoma State down at 19 and and they come in second in that conference. But they could shock they could shock things. They hit really well. So uh oh. that, I've got my I've got my say on Oklahoma State. Um, frauds is what I is what I get at. Is what a lot of people say. A lot of people say frauds. Um, a lot of people say win in the regular season and then you host your own regional two years in a row and you are taken out of it twice. Uh, that is a problem, right? I, I, yeah, that is a problem. But I do think they got a lot of good pieces coming in, and I think they're gonna change that around possibly this year. Maybe not host this year. I don't. I don't think. I don't think their RPI will be as high as it was. With everybody leaving the conference, right? I mean, yeah. that's what people have to put into effect. The RPI does take take a hit now, yeah. um, because all of the good teams that play that you play and might have had a series win against, they aren't in your series cal- uh, calendar anymore. So throw them out the, the factor. I think they're they're gonna head to somebody else's regional. They're gonna have to battle away, which might do them benefits, right? They literally might play better away from home. They could. So I think them being at what nineteen, I think that's perfect for them. Uh, yeah. Not too far down, not too far down, not too far high, and I think that's where they should sit. Right now, respectfully. So you're 18? 18. 18, I'm going to give it to West Virginia. Um, okay. I like it. A very good team. A very good team. Uh, a very good staff that they have there. Head coach uh, leaving, obviously, uh, retiring. So it does play a little bit of a part in my ranking. Uh, they might have been a little higher if he was still around. Um, but, you know, I think it's still a very good ranking for them being in the situation that they are in the Big 12. Yeah, I agree. And so that puts me at 17 where I have South Carolina and Palmineri. He's he's a he's a winner and yeah, this team though they were ranked high, they failed all expectations that we had for them in postseason. Um unfortunately, but uh you know, they they really could have made it to that super regional and and I think they didn't and that just it was hard. For, it was you know, hard. I love that pick for me. I love that pick for me. That's a perfect spot for him. Yeah, right, Palmer think... coming in there. He's gonna turn that program around. Dude. Uh, everybody I've talked to from there, they're fired up to play with this man. I I would um, be too. I mean, their lineup is great. They have Ethan Petri. They they have some of the best guys there still, and uh, you know they're gonna hit. They always do. It's just that they can find it, put everything together, and make Founders Park lit again. Yeah, yeah. And that was what's was, if you looked at Founders Park last year, that's what missed. Like Founders Park didn't look hyped to me at all compared to Petrie's freshman season. Yeah. Petrie's freshman season, dude, we had they they, they had people flooding the stadium, wanting to be there every single day. And, and especially what they've done in the portal with what they've done JUCO recruiting. Like Yeah, they've done a great job. Carolina is the team to the team to beat right now for me when it comes to what the situation they're in, new coach, um, you're you people are gunning for them. Oh, well, yo, we're yeah. not worried about Palmineri, we're not worried about you having Monty Lee on the assistant, dog, but we'll forget that. We're gonna dog you, and I think Carolina's gonna take it and they're gonna they're gonna run with it. And they're gonna be they're gonna be right back to that top 10 team that they were. So, where they are right now, perfect for perfect for way too early. And I'm excited to watch them change it. I'm excited, I'm really excited, especially if they get piece, some pieces to stay. My boy Roman, um, if Roman does decide to stay and play senior year out, I think he'll. Probably make more money than did it. They would this year, honestly. Um, we kind of didn't have the year he wanted to this year. It wasn't a bad year at all, though. But he could definitely, yeah. definitely, definitely make a lot more money this upcoming year. Weirdly, because he is still going to be a senior, but I think he he'll be one of those kids that have the opportunity to do that. I agree. So then, so there's seventeen. So who do you have at sixteen? Sixteen, sixteen, sixteen. We're headed to ECU. Um, they did surpass okay. expectations this year for me. Um, they they did it not the fact that they surpassed expectations to make it to the regional. No, how they performed in their regional. Um, it wasn't a bad regional at all. They they did get beat. It wasn't the easiest road for them. They played a. They played a. Evan, what, who did they play again? Why am I? Why am I going to play? You um, had Wake. Evan, Wake and uh, what was the Wake, other team? Evansville. Evansville. Yes, I'm thinking Evansville played Tennessee. No, uh, they played them, and you know. They they lost the first game, came back and won that second game, 
and the ability to do that in the regional is not the easiest thing. Last game kind of just ran out of gas, which happens. Um, and I, I, I think they're they're going to come back with a fire in them. Uh, and they're doing some work in the portal. I've seen. Uh, they do have a lot to recover from. So I yep. think where they're at right now is perfect. But I do end up. I do think honestly, this is one of my picks. But I think they'll end up dropping. Um, they'll end up dropping to a 24, 20, 24, 25 pick, maybe out of the top 25. Yeah, they could. And then this is where it really gets interesting because the way they finished their season, the way things went for them, it's hard for me to to stick with Wake Forest and still have so much belief in them. But I have Wake Forest at 14. Yeah, you can't deny yeah. Wake Forest with what yeah. they've got, like what they can be. With with the with the uh, resources they have, I, I think and, and, that's yeah, and I mean perfect. they've been doing good work in the portal. Obviously, today they just got Matthew Dallas from Tennessee. We were just talking about yeah. that before we started. I mean they're going to be good. They always are. They they you can't deny that. That was fourteen, right? That was fourteen. Thirteen. I'm going to head out west. We're going to give Oregon thirteen spot. Uh, I, I think that's a really good team. I think it's a really good team. I think they have a lot of pieces staying. Um, the bill. Uh, Nam, they're a really good team. I think that's a team that will, will do exactly what they did this year and may be able to – if they didn't run the college station, I think they would have been perfectly fine, but they ran into the hardest place of them all, which happens. But I think they'll be they'll be a damn good team to watch this year. Yeah. So so that puts me in the place where at 12 I'm putting Arizona. Um, I think – I, I think I had them I had them border on obviously my twenty five pick was Arizona. Twenty five era was Arizona or Miami for yeah. all us. Which is fine. But we're, we're we're two even teams I think coming into this year. Um in two very similar situations. Uh where the fan base and the people are kinda like, all right, like y'all need to win. Like y'all need to win now. Um I, and I agree. I I think that's very high. I think the people that think you're a bandwagon for them, uh, the, the people that think you're a horse for them will jump on you for that. It's gonna be like, yeah, you're an Arizona lover, and I, I rightfully so. It's a really good team. They got a lot of good pieces, but I, I don't think they performed as such in the playoffs. So. That's true. I mean, it's hard for me to say that after what I just saw in the playoffs, but I know that they got a, a lot of young pieces. Obviously, you know they got Summer Hill holding into it, and if he puts up another year where he makes another jump like he did going into this year. I could see him being a mid to top first round pick and propelling that team to similar to what it's hard to say similar to what Chase Davis was able to do because he wasn't really able to do it um, because they had no team success then. But I think I think they could put another good season and and they might not host the committee might not give it to them. I see them falling, but uh, I think they put another good season together where they do make postseason play this year. Added to the 11th spot. Yeah. 11, where 11, uh, Oregon State, um, a team that is losing their guy, obviously, losing probably two or three more guys that, that are playing big factors, yeah. that played a big factors for them. Um, so I think 11 is perfect for them, right? Right outside the top 10, you you take your remaining pieces that were around that culture. They know what it takes now. Um, they're getting, they're going to be older. They're going to develop a little more. They know what they need to do. So I think 11 is right perfectly for them. Definitely, especially them being in the situation once again. The whole Pac-12 leaving, they're still sitting around there. Um, they're gonna play some okay teams, not crazy, yeah. but I, I think they're, they're they'll be good. Yeah. So at ten, leaves me between Georgia and Oklahoma, and here I go Georgia because solely the fact that they just can't really pitch, and uh, hitting can only get you so far. They can hit though. They, boy, they can hit. They can hit the ball out of the park anywhere, but they can't really pitch, and it was shown when it mattered most, and uh, that's why I, I put them at ten. But ten is ten is a good spot. Ten is a good spot. Um, my ten was Clemson. I'm I'm um, high on Clemson. Are you? Yeah, I thought it was a little. I thought it was a little disrespectful to them. I thought it was, but at the same time, I also didn't think it was crazy disrespectful. Being the fact that they did lose. They didn't make it to Omaha. Yeah. Um, I thought it was kind of a perfect spot for them to where, like, all right, like, Bakich, you've been to the regional, super regional twice now. Go win it. Like, win yeah. the damn thing now. I, I, I get that. I'm really high on Clemson. Um, so, 
nine seems a little low. Like, you know, seems a little low, but I, I see it. I like it. So you have Clemson at nine. So I, I think I put Oklahoma at eight after what they did this year. Um, they're a really good team. They're a really slept on team. I I just I'll swap my picks around. I'll go Oklahoma ten, Clemson nine. Oklahoma ten, Clemson. All right. So, so I think in terms of conference, Clemson has a better chance of finishing higher. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna go Clemson then Oklahoma. So Oklahoma then Clemson. So if you're doing that, that so I, go, the eight, I go Kentucky at eight. Um. It, so it's hard. Okay. Okay. They, like never that had that. Like they never had this kind of success that everyone's going to say. Can so they your college? That's like yeah. That's what this way. Like, can you do it again? Like, can you even do it again? Was this like the one, the random yeah. one year? Yeah, but I don't it's, think it was. especially with the SEC now. I don't think they finish as good as they did. I don't think they can go into Arlington, Texas. I don't think they can go into Oklahoma. I don't think they can go into a lot of these places to just win like they were doing. And they're losing a lot of pieces. Let's remember that. They are. They they are losing a lot of guys, but, but they're also, also gaining they've done a lot. A great job in the portal. Kentucky is one of those schools that has done work for themselves in the portal. And I think it's gonna show. I think they get that that eight spot. And it's a little bit of a fall off. I mean, obviously they were the two, they were the two this year. So it, you see a drop off there, but they're also gonna do pretty well in a loaded SEC, and that's gonna play play it play a lot into that ranking. So that's where I have them. All right. That's the eight spot for you. Yeah. My eight. My eight was uh NC State, but okay. you can go for you there. And then seven yeah. you can go to seven now. Seven. They're my seven. They're my seven. 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 I'm giving UVA the number seven. Um I think another really good team. Uh I mean, obviously another Omaha appearance, a historical team at that, the team that's known to make to the postseason year in and year out. So I think seven's perfectly for him. Like, you know, go in, try to do what you did last year and and finish the job this year. Yeah. That's that's a good pick. That's a good spot for them. At six, I have LSU. Yeah. yeah. I think six LSU. I, mean, I was waiting. I was waiting. I was thinking you were gonna go top five, but six was where I had them. Six is LSU for me. Just right there. Um, yeah. And then my two ties. I have two I have a four A and a four B and a five A and a five B. Okay. Where would you so, start? You start off with that then. LSU was six, correct? So my 5A and 5B, I was going UNC and I was going Florida for 5A and 5B. I think it's a very good pick for both of them. Two very good teams. Um, Florida doing the work in the portal. Um, picking up Blake Sear, obviously a dog. Would she stay in Miami? We would have been with the with, with, with Og and Sear in the middle of the field. We, we might have been top notch and Sear could slide to the outfield as well. I mean, but I think hey, yeah, but he's going to do things at Florida for sure. They are losing Kate Fisher, plays a part. They are losing Jack. Uh, they losing, are. losing a piece, they're losing a lot of pieces. So that's why I put them at five A and five B. I don't want to put them too high in, into the ranks. I don't want to put the top four because I wanted to see what they could do. But I also know Sully is a certified winner, and there's no question about it at this point. He's going to do what he has to do to win. So five A five B, Florida, UNC, four A four B, Florida State, and UGA. Okay, you have UGA high. I like that though. I'm high, my boys. I think God, they got a lot of dudes coming to JoJo Jackson. If JoJo can make it to campus and not and, and miss the draft, and but I, I think he will get. Well, I think he'll get what he's asking for. Um, uh, I think he'll get it. He's well deserving of it. To play on the baseball field, but if he slips to campus, they also have got Brandon Hudson, a guy from Georgia State, with me. Three thir- uh, uh, three thirty, sixteen pumps. Like kid's gonna hit the crap on the ball. Um. Alton Davis coming in. Still got Colin Smith. Uh, Trey Fell. Trey, obviously. Uh, they, they're one of those teams for sure. Uh, they're, they're definitely yeah. going to have a big prove it year. Like, you got to prove it. Uh, yeah. But I also think they will they will prove it, at least for the first half. I think for the first half they'll prove it. They might have a little problem later in the year with these better teams that they'll play. But we'll see. They're my 4A, 4B. Yeah. So, I mean, I had my 4A, 4B. I, I actually – I also had a 5A, 5B, not a 4A, 4B. My 5A, 5B was UNC in Florida, um, similar to you. I think I had Florida a spot up because UNC is losing some guys um, with Honeycutt and with Tenofrio, and and it's going to be a proving year for both of those schools just because this conferences around them are getting a little better. Um, so next at four, 
Here is where I have Clemson. Mm-hmm. I, I think Cannarell is the top pick next year. Um, and oh, that's our number have, one. They have some great pieces around him. I mean, obviously, Aiden Act just won freshman pitcher of the year. Um, was an All American. They have other guys coming in. Uh, another New York guy, Justin Lagernick, who mm-hmm. will make an impact this year. And and you know, Clemson just what they do is play really good small ball and set up ball to get to their guys that can do the damage. And they did it all year this year. And obviously they lost and they didn't make it to Omaha, but they were dominant all year long in the ACC. They were ranked yeah. one. Yeah. Two I'm excited to get a chance to, to run into those guys. that will be fun, um, especially playing against guys like Cam. I'm excited to just play ACC ball and play a, a lot of good teams in the ACC, right? Like the ACC, we're looking at it. We've got, we got five in the top ten. Um, yeah. It's pretty even. Um, it's pretty even. It's pretty exciting. We've got five in the top ten. I think, what, uh, seven overall in the top 25. It's, it's a really good really good place to be if you're the ACC. And I think Clemson is one of those teams. I'm honestly waiting for them to make it to Omaha. Uh, like, yeah. I want to see them in Omaha. I, I want to see it. I think they make it next year. Oh, wow. It me. You know, I think a team that makes it to Omaha next year, I'm putting them in my three, Arkansas, and they'll finally make it back. I was my three. I was my three, Arkansas. Arkansas. Um, what they've done to the Portal, pretty good so far. Uh, also picked up another Georgia State dude, which is crazy if you just look at Georgia State guys. It's where we're ending up. Yep. SEC, ACC guys. It's just ridiculous being that was coming from one Sunbelt team. That's seven ACC guys from SEC, ACC guys from one Sunbelt team, which is impressive. It's ridiculous to look at. Um, but yeah, Max Murray going to, to to the Omaha, the Omahaans, whatever you want to call them. But I think the uh, the Arkansas Arkansas wave is definitely still there for sure. I think they will make another uh, Omaha appearance this year. I think they will get back, and that leads to my number two. Obviously, can't go against the number one grain here. Number two has to be Texas A and M. Yep. Um, great team, great rebuild going on. Um, grew, the the shit that they're going through, I wouldn't wish that on any kid in college baseball and college sports. I would for them to handle it how they are. Um, I think these kids are are kind of. I think whoever runs into them next year, I think when Texas runs into them next year, Texas is about to get molly watched like no other because they're not playing any games. And I think Texas A and M is going to be. They're gonna. They literally might be the number two year, the number two season team the whole the whole year. Yeah, I think this number one and this number two might be being one and two the whole year. It's obviously if stuff plans out how it should. But it, my final predictions: Tennessee number one, right, Texas yeah. A&M number two, right, and yeah. Arkansas number three. Yeah, with Georgia at the four, and then UNC or, or who did I have at the four at the five again? UNC or uh, Florida State at the five. So I think I think it'll be fun to see how this all plays out. But it's obviously way too early. Where we might do another, we might do an update when the portal's all done. Yeah. Um. And I, I, I think it'll be fun to see. But we're also gonna do a post draft episode. We're gonna give our insights on what we thought. Um. We I we know. might we might try to do a, a go live situation. Uh. During the draft. Um. You know, yeah. with our projections pulled up, and you know, we see if our picks are matching. I think we have a really good one through thirty two. I, I like the one through thirty two, and I think, I think what we got to do is uh. Get one of the we'll get one of the guys on once the once the draft is over. Get some guys. Yeah, yeah you know, I don't know the draft, especially first round guys. It's a really busy day for them. I'll probably give them a couple of days to relax, and get settled in with their whatever they got going on new, and probably give them to hop on and talk. Or, but I might do. I might get in contact with Trey, um, Trey, some guys like that, RJ. See what they're doing, Carolla. We might all get an Instagram live going, and I want to get there. I want to get a lot of other guys, you know, projections on what they're thinking. For the draft, and I, I think that'd be pretty cool for the, the whole baseball community to be in and alive, and you know, seeing what what we're also what the players are seeing because you know, being a fan is different from being a player. You see, it, you see it a lot differently than we do. Um, yeah. So it'll be fun to to see how this draft stuff plays out. Uh, the 2023 2024 college baseball season was one to remember for sure. One of the best college baseball seasons I think we've seen in a while. Um, especially how Omaha played out, played out like cinema, played out like a movie. Uh, we love that. Um, I'm excited. I think this upcoming year is going to be really fun. A lot of a lot of good new opportunities for everybody, um, teams, players. The, the, this this 2025 draft class is loaded. It'll be one of the best we've seen. So it'll be fun. Yeah, 
it's going to be great. The draft is going to be awesome this weekend. It's going to be awesome to see how our picks, you know. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, I want to. I at least want to see how my top ten plays out. Um, I want to see obviously. I think what obviously everybody wants to see is this Cod and stuff. Um, if he does end up being the number one. Yeah. I mean, uh, if he does end up being the number one, are we all surprised? Not one bit. No. So, not. Let's see how it goes, brother. With another good episode locked in. We're gonna aim. I'll be back in Atlanta. We're gonna aim to get get one done pretty soon. Especially, I'll be back in Atlanta Friday. We'll, we'll aim Sunday. I'll be live. I, I want to say Sunday. I'll be live on Instagram. I'll be I'll, live. I'll be, okay. I'll, I'll be posting it on Instagram. Getting me some guys up in there. I want to see everybody hopping up in there, talking college baseball, and seeing what they think on the draft. Yeah, I'll be on that with you. We'll be watching. Text some people right um, now, actually. Uh, you know, get some work in and uh, get some recruiting done for that. Get a big event going and let's let's have everyone in. We'll have this episode out Friday, if not before, um, so you guys can watch it, you know, see how our picks are with the draft and see what you guys think because we want to talk to you guys in the comments and everything and see what you guys have to say about what we had going out and uh other than that be sure to like comment subscribe and then uh comment when you guys want me down in the u yeah we're gonna up to the u we're gonna see some things out you know see the beautiful campus see the beautiful facilities we got so we'll, we'll get that make that get that going for sure but yeah another good episode in the books we'll be yeah. sure to tune in i want everybody to tune in on sunday it'll be a definitely it'll be a fun one um that is your live i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get it set up right now it'll be fun to get everybody's opinions and Hundred percent from there. Yeah. So thank you guys for watching, and uh, that's will be off Friday, and we'll see you guys. Yep, we'll see y'all.